came across this video on YouTube, 25 years old, I have no friends, I have social anxiety and I thought that's really interesting, 25 years old because you know that social anxiety part, a lot of people have that and a lot of people, even people who are extroverts can have social anxiety at times. Um, I just want to know, 25 years old, you're at the peak of your your being, some would say, not really, I think, every day you're alive, you're at the peak of your being, every day you're alive, you should be happy to be alive and you should be at your prime time. But anyway, a lot of people would say 25, that's like the sweet spot, right? So it's interesting to see how he had no friends at that age or has no friends at that age, right? So I thought, let's just react to this and see what it's like for this gentleman. Here you go. I am 25 and I have no friends. I guess I wanted to kind of go into why I have no friends and I guess where it all started and when I started to notice that maybe I was not that good at socializing. Um, I guess as a kid I was always, I never had an issue socializing. I was, I was almost like the, I was almost like the popular kid, like, through high school, I was, I was friends, I never fit in, like, every- You know what, sometimes you look at these videos and you're like, why are people putting their entire business out there? Like, who wants to know? Well, apparently almost 300,000 people want to know, okay, and this video is not even a year old. Um, so yeah, people are quite interested in these things, and in fact, it helps other people, and I think that's the most beautiful thing of all. That it helps other people overcome these same type of feelings and same type of life issues but it's interesting that he was the popular kid and then now all of a sudden has no friends what happened in the meantime he knew of me but i never really fit in i knew the popular i guess the like the the popular kids and the other kids that just were not popular or the nerds and i knew i was friends with both of like the cliques Mm. Same thing, same thing kind of happened to me. Friend, you can be friends with the nerdy people, you can be friends with the people that nobody wanted to be friends with, and you can be cool with the so-called cool people. And have your clique, but still be cool with everybody else, like kick it with everybody else. So what had happened? Because that seems like a good spot to be in. And I never, like I knew them both, but I never was close with any of them. Ah, uh, I... I think that's where things went wrong. You can be cool with everybody, but you need to pick a clique that you're gonna, you know, hang out with, go to their house, they come to your house, you cook together, you do fun stuff together, you do activities together, you know, you need to pick one that you are really close to, that people in high school or whatever would be able to say, ah, he rolls with these folk, you know? I, I remember because we, when I was going to lunch one day at high school, I was wondering, I was like, where, where am I gonna sit? So we had different shifts. We had a, you know, a first shift, a second shift, and a third shift for lunch. And I went to Liberty High School. It's in Kansas City, and it was a pretty big school. I remember that was like the biggest thing I was worried about. I was like, where am I going to sit at lunch? Like, what table am I going to sit at? And I knew I could sit. You know, people think they just send you people, meaning parents, they send you off to high school and they think, oh yeah, she or he's going to have great education and you know, this is great and put your heads in the books and things like that, but they don't realize, or maybe they do, maybe they've been through this themselves. But one of the things that also is an aspect of school is the social aspect. Nobody really talks about that. Nobody thinks about that. Teachers don't care about it. Teachers will watch this kid get ostracized, be completely alone. And they'll be like, Ma, here's your test D, here's your test F, or here's your test A. Other than that, they don't really care about how you're progressing socially. But it's so important because these people become, they become your masseuse, they become your florist, they become your governor, they become your whatever, whatever. The, these people from the schools are the future. And they always say that, but they never say it in a way as though it could affect them until it does, you know. One day, hey, they could be the, your teacher, your French teacher could be lying up in the hospital. And who's the nurse? Oh, awkward Billy. Hmm. And then like, <laughs> how would that make you feel? Because you know that this was the ostracized kid when you were teaching them. 
so yeah it's it's actually very important that we take a look at these things as well because as some of these kids are going to school they're not only thinking am i going to pass this test am i going to do well did i study enough they're also going to think hmm where am i going to sit come lunchtime these are all very very heavy burdens that some children carry and nobody seems to care about with just about anybody but i wasn't really that close with anybody so i was i was i was kind of lost i was like in a phase of you know i i just really didn't have any close friends and i started to notice this once i turned about 23 at 23 i really started to notice that i was not i was not that good at socializing or my social skills were going down you know, through high school, my skills were... You know, your social skills will go down if you don't need them, if you don't use them, right? So he was feeling ostracized, he was kind of alone, he was cool with certain groups, but not part of a group. And so this, this, is, this is the problem. This is actually the problem. Sometimes I wonder if this is the fault of the person or the fault of everybody around them. Like, I've been a lot, around a lot of people in a lot of different places, countries, whatever, and... Hmm, Sometimes you realize the person, there's nothing about the person. The person is fine. It's just, it's the, the people around them. I don't know. I don't know if you guys have ever thought about this or you've ever seen that with the people that you've dealt with. But sometimes it's like, it's the environment. It truly, truly is. Because when you become that person who says, uh-uh, this person is super cool. There's something about this person. And I'm going to find out how cool they are. I'm going to befriend them one way or the other. Because I know I know that there's something about this person. And when you do and you realize, oh my goodness, this person is super cool. Yeah. Then you realize, oh no, it wasn't that person. It was everybody else. So schools are good at diagnosing somebody in terms of, mm, I think they need to repeat a year. Mm, I think the way I'm seeing the things, I think they need to go to summer school. Mm, I think they can skip a year. This is all academically and yes, yeah, sure, school is for academics, but this is where people develop their personal skills as well. So important to also understand how somebody's developing on a personal level whilst they're in school. So sometimes you really, really just wonder, hmm, why don't these people pay extra attention to that? And why don't they try and address those issues too? Have a school, psych yes, um, have a school um, psychologist, have a school, somebody on board in school that is going to be there. Heck, tuition can be ridiculously high. What the heck are they doing with that money? Okay, they sure as heck ain't paying the teachers enough because teachers need to be paid way, way more. And I'm sure, hey, school has become much more expensive than when I was there. Every class has a smart board. Every class has all these uh, computers and things, all this fancy stuff, right? It's expensive anyway. But there needs to be, we need to look at the psyche of these kids because we, <laughs> We grow up and then we see all these either people on YouTube, people end up in the news, people are losing it, people are having real issues, people are having interpersonal skills that are horrible, and we wonder where that comes from. But I feel like the school, look, people's households, hey, that can sometimes be the most unstable thing in a child's life. But school is supposed to be that one place that's actually stable, right? Because it has a lot of structure there. It has a lot that could could kind of mold people into upstanding citizens. It could. It has the potential to. Don't know when we'll ever get there. Because right now it's academics, academics, academics. And when you even finish the academics, <laughs> you finish all that study. You'll be studying all your life. And then guess what? You can be 25 like this dude, have no friends and have no job. Have the degrees, have no friends and have no job. So all the academics that we keep emphasizing on you know when 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 the hardship comes and you don't have a job and you don't have what 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 what's gonna make sure that this person doesn't really go crazy in society quite literally not i'm not talking about this guy specifically but i'm just talking in general i just think there needs to be way more attention put on the the, the mental health of children in school i think primary school maybe especially high school it is rough it is rough you know there'll be some kids who will be faking sickness and all that so that they don't have to go to school and deal with all the nonsense that's there and teachers just are not equipped and shouldn't be because they're not psychologists or therapists or whatever but then there should be somebody at school that is and 
can really see the things for what they are and can really help and can actually help children because you know something from the minute you enter a school it's scary for everybody maybe high school you were the oldest in your primary school and then now you've come back to being the youngest in high school so now everything is shifted now you're the new one so you're not gonna walk around as if you're wearing some big pants you're, you're gonna really humble yourself right you're gonna humble yourself so at that point that's when they should catch you see where your mental is at and try and mold you into an upstanding citizen but they let them run wild and free till that initial humbleness or fear or whatever you can call it right a bit of angst is gone and they're bold enough to do whatever that's when they start bullying thinking they're everything and stuff like that right so there are many opportunities that schools or educational systems have to really mold kids into better people because unfortunately the home situation is not always stable and it's really hard to control that which also that's a whole other conversation that needs to be controlled better there needs to be more attention put on on kids and how they behave and to see whether they're actually safe and okay in their household but i'm talking about schools an institution these institutions who can have the power to really form and shape what a child is like and make sure that every child has an amazing interpersonal inter, has amazing interpersonal relationships with everybody around them you know because at this point a lot of parent, parents are really thinking about this homeschooling stuff because the school schools ain't doing it if you are 25 year old years old and you've been in school all this while maybe college or uni you're 25 years old and you have no friends hmm because social anxiety is real but it's something you can overcome like i said there's some extroverts that have social anxiety Sometimes they're just very good at hiding it. Uh, sometimes it just doesn't show its head all the time, but they can have it. Whether it's in certain situations or whatever, they're not always giddy and happy to talk to everybody and stuff like that. I mean, I didn't know anything about it before, you know, 23 years old. And I started to look it up and, you know, get a feel for it. And I was like, wow, okay, maybe, you know, maybe I have some social anxiety. And lo and behold, since 23, it has done nothing, but it's just gotten worse. And, you know, through the uh, recommendation of my doctor, he referred me to another doctor that would be willing to, you know, help me out through coaching through different medications. And I, I tried a bunch of different medications. Um, I remember I, try, I was trying. Now you see he's talking about medications and medications are good we're not gonna shame anybody for that okay there's even churches where they're like yeah a little bit of jesus a little bit of medication you know the two can work well together you know this is not something that we are shunning people for anymore thank the lord we are totally in acceptance of you know the medication we can embrace that that's fine um but my thing is you know he he's kind of alluded to the origins of all this right he's talking about his school experience and how he basically didn't know where where to sit or who he belonged with and that's what i'm saying there is always a start to some of these things there is a root cause to some of these things right and that's where i feel like it could have been nipped in the bud earlier on if the whole it, let, let's just imagine you come to a school and then before everything else before all what what classes do you want to take and all that it's like personally what how do you feel about life right now how do you feel about life how are you how are you feeling about coming to this new school or whatever um what are your plans to succeed um what does your studying pattern usually look like you know even procrastinators there's there's a deep rooted issue when people procrastinate there is a reason why people procrastinate it's all it all comes from somewhere right so you find out the the root of it all try and fix it you can just imagine if you have other other people talking about oh i got this grade i got this grade oh i'm doing this oh, i'm doing so well oh i got an a oh i got an a plus that alone can make you want to turn away from all these other kids 
because they're driving you nuts you know you're probably not going to ace that exam you know you're probably falling behind you know you're probably not doing well that's either because of things at the house that's either because of you you're just anxious about the whole thing in general it's just because maybe you've had a, a few bad experiences with some exams or whatever in the past and then here come these so-called friends. Well, I'm doing great. Well, I'm going to get an A. Well, I'm going to get an A+. plus. Oh, I didn't study at all. I didn't study at all. Then you're like, ooh, ooh, they didn't study too. Maybe there's hope for me. Oh, ooh, I got an A+. Plus. I got an A+. Plus. I didn't even study at all. I don't know how I got an A+, plus, but I sure did. And yeah, stuff like that will make you want to run. Not just turn away. Run from so-called friends. Run from people. So it's like, the academic side and the personal side they they work in tandem right one can cause anxiety in the other field it so it is important that schools unis colleges whatever this whole educational system looks at a person and doesn't just look at their grades and say oh that's the good student but that's that's the kind student that's the this that student or that's the student that's suffering with this and that because we sit here and then next thing you know, these people turn out to do the craziest things that, as adults. I'm not saying this guy, but I'm just saying. The big issue I was having was like, I would talk to somebody and I would, I would have a hard time, like I, even with my friends, like even people I knew. I mean, in the beginning it was actually people I didn't know, but as time went on it got worse and it was, even with people I, I knew, I would get this rush over me. I don't know, if you guys have any social anxiety, you know exactly what this is. When you talk to somebody and like you get this rush over you and it's just like slap in the face like what are you even talking to me about like you're having a full-fledged conversation and you're just trying to hold on for dear life like hoping you just don't explode and like it shows on your face I'm like man it's got it i was like oh i can't do this anymore that's like the worst thing about social anxiety and, like it sucks too because you know you know that the the other people see it on you maybe you think the other people see it on you it depends on how well you can fake it you know this this has happened to a lot of people i know many times and then you're talking to them and you're like the responses you're getting you're like yeah this one ain't listening it's happened to me a few times i mean sometimes you get uh what do you call it um social fatigue <laughs> it's just like you're just talking to people maybe it's an event or whatever and you're talking and talking and talking you're just like i'm, I'm tired I'm tired and you're just talking so much and it, it, it's like I don't know it's like you're there but you're not there you know and somebody's doing the talking but you're like I, I don't know if that's me or who that is like you're just talking so much and smiling so much and it can be exhausting now I don't know I don't think this this only happens to people who don't have friends and and have diagnosed social anxiety I think this is something that can happen to people in general which is also why sometimes you need to distance yourself from people for yourself you can't be around people all the time 24 7 even the biggest personalities in 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 i don't know all the elite people all the, the musicians who, who, who some people don't go to the after party because it's more people it's more talking it's more networking it's more socializing heck sometimes it's more nonsense so they don't go enough is enough you need to know your boundaries and i'm talking about people who don't have social anxiety per se but this thing that he's talking about it's so interesting because it can happen to anybody right where you're talking 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 at some point you're like who is talking <laughs> it's like you're talking about you're so tired of the talking that it's like Phew. if you have social anxiety i mean to the extent that i have it um people notice it on you they know it on you because I can feel it. Like I can feel, I can feel them knowing I have it. Like I'm yeah, they can sense the awkwardness. That's that's for sure. But I know that a lot of people, you know, you can you can fake it too. You can fake, you know, you can you can assimilate to where you're not comfortable, but you're gonna leave a good impression. Let me just put it that way. You're not comfortable, but you're gonna leave a good enough impression smile through it all so that people don't notice what you're going through internally yeah but i guess if you have diagnosed social anxiety that's not really going to be an option it's going to it's going to be as if it's written on your forehead right and i had a joining fraternity and even at the fraternity that's i like 
it wasn't really me, like doing that was not really me, but I really wanted to party. And it's hard for guys to party if you're not in a fraternity. And I remember I joined a fraternity and it was just like, I did not fit in with anybody there. It was. These type of clubs, places are usually places with a whole bunch of pretentious people who are just trying to fit in and possibly don't even agree or enjoy any of the stuff that's going on, but they just want to fit in somewhere. And it's by fire, by force. They just work their way in there and say, yep, I'm just gonna stay here because this is where I can party. This is where you have to party. This is where the party at, you know? And it's the same as the, the, the two friend groups that he was talking about. Either go left, either go right. It's like trying to find a, a, a place, a, 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 a uh, yeah, be part of a clique and he couldn't find one to be in all those people in the fraternity and all these uh, things All these groups and clubs and whatnot. Some people just force themselves to stay in there It's not everybody you see in there. That's happy to be in there They're in there because they think that's what they need to do Some will be there to cure their social anxiety. They force themselves to cure themselves of it some will be there because they feel like this is the place to be. Some will be there because they want to be seen with people. But not everybody is there because they genuinely enjoy it. But that's when you need to know that a lot of these groups and things, sometimes in high school and stuff like that, hey, maybe he's doing the better thing now by not having friends. It might, it might seem lonely, but at least he's not forcing himself to be with a group of people that he's just with because dot dot dot. All these reasons that make no sense at all. I hope he does find friends though, along the line. I mean, it's really hard to get good genuine friends after a certain age, I'll tell you that much. Um, at some point, it's just it's just a lot of fake roo and <laughs> it's just weird. It's good to have them at an earlier age and then you can grow up with them and have your memories with them and stuff like that. But I feel like the older you get, the more difficult it becomes, to be very honest. I was still like, in, I was like an introvert. Like, I want to be social, but I'm an introvert at the same time it's it's contradicting myself i know but hard to explain it's not hard there are extrovert introverts on this planet it's so possible to sometimes feel like you don't want to be around anybody and then sometimes really 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 need people like really want to be around people like every party every event you're there talking to everybody with a smile on you don't care but then other days you really just want to be left alone and you will cancel everything, you'll not go anywhere, you'll not be around anybody and you'll be chilling in the house and you'll be cool with that, just enjoying your own company. I think that's actually a very balanced way to live and a lot of people are an extrovert introvert so that's not too crazy, you know. But anyways, I've tried so many medications and you know, it's just not working. I mean, two and a half years into trying this, I've tried, um, right now I'm on testosterone uh, injections on high dose testosterone because I've read and uh, can help significantly with social anxiety. It, it does. Hold up, he read it can help with. So who's his doctors? Who are his doctors? Right? Okay, let me tell you, let me just be brutally honest. Usually in society, people who ostracize the people who are not conventionally, con conventionally the standard of beauty, right? This guy is very, very handsome, right? And so under normal circumstances, this would be the kind of guy that people, maybe parents or grandparents would be like, but why don't you have friends? Or why don't you have a girlfriend? You're so handsome. You know, this stuff that people usually say. And like, it's not really about that. The, the handsome part, you know, people are just born with that. He's still who he is internally, right? His soul doesn't have this face. It's just his soul. That's just who he is internally, right? So yeah. The thing is, um, where was I going with that? Where I was going with that is that normally you think, oh, this person is so handsome. How come they don't have any friends? Because usually, eh, usually what would happen is, oh, the ugly duckling, quote unquote, right? Um, that's the person that is ostracized. That's the person who doesn't have friends, this, that, that, right? So it is very interesting. I find it interesting also that he read about testosterone helping with blah, 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 blah and then he got it prescribed just like that our doctors our, our medical professionals just out here it i think it depends on where you go because some people are some doctors and they're so so stingy when it comes to medication you can be like i got this that 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 they're like uh-huh go rest uh-huh paracetamol there are other doctors this that 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 and they're they're just like giving you all the heavy stuff for this guy to be on a high dose of testosterone because of what he's going through 
wow 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 you see because some of these doctors they won't do what they think is right they will do whatever you think you learned from google doctor or dr google and they'll just give it to you it's quicker it's quicker than having a whole consultation and going back and forth they just give you what you want but it can be very dangerous again which is why i say this stuff needs to be nipped in the bud from school i have no friends <laughs> And it's like, it's getting harder as I get older. You know, it's, after college, I, you know, I didn't, like, I don't keep in touch with any of my friends. And they're not keeping in touch with you. I mean, that stuff goes both ways. Um, but also, yeah, it gets harder. And then now in the midst of this panoramic, I mean, yeah, social life is, is, is non-existent. That's what I'm saying. You know, if, if we, <laughs> The, 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 yeah, sometimes people have the mindset, oh, I'll do it, oh, I will do it. At some point, I'll go to the parties and meet people. At some point, I'll go and join certain clubs and meet people. At some point, at some point, at some point. And now, we wish we would have stopped procrastinating and got those friends, went out there, went to the different entertainment parties, networking events, museums, what, 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 what. Because now church gatherings whatever because now look at us look at us i don't know who is making new friends ever since 2020 came about i don't know to make connections in order to get a job and like i want to be successful i want to go out and you know i want to make a lot of money like I, that's what i want to do i want to help people if i can help people and make money at the same time that would be awesome mm -hmm. yeah. forget about school having friends afterwards then now here comes job oh boy that's a whole thing all by itself you know trying to find a job and then even during the interview your interpersonal skills are super important and you know this is how people end up on benefits end up you know on so many things because they have social anxiety or they're they're actually an extrovert but on this particular day all the anxiety of certain things is coming together to form a mental block and a, a smile block and an everything block and they're like yeah sorry we chose to go with another candidate but have a have a good time you know applying to other jobs yeah that's when that stuff comes in because sometimes it's it's on your off day and if you have social anxiety every day can seem like your off day and that's what i'm saying People should come out of these institutions, educational establishments, and at least have more than just grades. Because at the end of the day, when you're sitting, you know, when, it, when it comes down to it, the important stuff like making money and having a good job and helping people like this guy is saying he wants to do, um, your grades, they actually, they don't mean anything. They don't care whether you're book smart. They want you to be friendly. They want you to be able to make the deal. Anybody can make a deal. You don't even have to have gone to uni or college or anything, right? They want you to be, you know, the one to search for the, the, the cold contacts and the warm contacts and, and keep them with, with the firm and with the company and what, what, what. They want you to be friendly, likable, all these things, right? But if you're walking around with constant stress, huh? nope. I guess I just wanted to get on here because I know that I can reach more people and more people are in the same position I am. I know I'm not the only one. I'm very pro-minded about trying to fix this issue. Like I want to fix this. I'm going to do whatever I can to fix this because it. You know what? It's good he brought it to our attention. It, it has brought my mind to so many things and it's super brave for him to do this. I will never shame anybody for coming on YouTube, speaking their truth and hoping anybody will see it. And yeah, he did get people who saw it, which is great. And even people subscribe because this guy only got like six videos on his channel and this I think is the first video and that was just on the 5th of August of 2020 so yeah it's good and um, he might get some YouTube friends out of this I don't know but you know there's hope because he's comfortable you know coming on here speaking his truth online and posting it which you know for somebody with social anxiety I mean that's a pretty big step I hope he gets well and gets off all these meds because all these meds have side effects and then you know you got the med for social anxiety but then it causes depression or could cause depression okay so how does that help 
it can become a vicious cycle, you know, and then you need the medication for the depression, but that one brings pain, and then the pain brings more social anxiety, so then you need to up the dose of this, like, it can be crazy, okay? It can be crazy. Um, so I hope he gets off that stuff. I grew up kind of alone, like, I didn't really have, you know, brothers or sisters. That's another thing. These children that grow up alone, yo, if you can ever help it, don't make sure your child is an only child. It's just sad. You will barely hear people say, oh, and I had the most amazing time, and my parents had all the attention just for me, and I was never lonely. No, my parents were like my brother and my sister. Nope. Go talk to anybody who's an only child. These people are lonely. You're sad. And yeah, it's not good. And it can end up like this. Social anxiety and all. I'm telling you, I don't know if anybody's done a study on this, but this is very, very common in only child only child chronicles yeah my first video so i probably don't have anybody watching this i'm probably just talking to myself here that's so funny look at the views my dude you did well <laughs> you did well don't know how this video blew up but yeah somebody said the more adult you become the more you see how fake and disconnected society is we're meant to belong to a tribe so we just have to find our own tribes yep everybody everybody belongs to somewhere eventually at the end of the day <laughs> and somebody said the youtube algorithm is getting too personal now yeah this might this might really resonate with a lot of people which is a good thing and another person says the older you become the more you realize how faked and distant people really are hmm? especially how you know he said he was kind of you know he did kind of have people and the next thing you know poof they all disappear and he was like i don't keep in contact with people from college but the real question is why is nobody keeping in contact with him this is the real question you know oh and i love this one absolutely love it because i scream it every day from the mountaintops somebody says the problem is that nowadays people get associates and friends mixed up a lot you're lucky if you get one friend throughout your lifetime and that's normal it really it oh my goodness it really really is it really really is i love this comment so much people be like oh my friends my friends my friends and they're like uh-huh where does this person live and the so-called friend can't even tell you can't even tell you where this other person lives like they don't have a clue about anything you know there's definitely a difference between associates and friends don't mix up the two there's a clear difference somebody said during high school i would sit with anyone because i had no friends so i just sat by myself all throughout high school i also got bullied for it because every time i had to talk uh, in class my face would turn so red and i would feel it then everyone would just stare laugh or try not to laugh they're pathetic <laughs> those people are pathetic that's all oh somebody says too bad all of us didn't go to the same school we could have eaten lunch with each other <laughs> yeah the real question actually is would you have or would you all be scared of each other still and not want to really connect you never know mm. no friends are better than fake friends without a doubt feeling alone around people is worse than being alone i know that's right see here we go i'm 21 and no friends i don't have social i don't have social anxiety though i chose to be like this because i haven't met anybody worth my time most people don't interest me. I tend to feel lonely when I'm surrounded by people. Yeah, this can also be a choice. That's what I was trying to say. I'm 28 and have no friends. It's lonely sometimes, but I've come to enjoy my freedom. Mm -hmm. Some of us were meant to be alone. I'm 57. I've been alone my entire life and I've had no friends. I make good money at my job and can, function in, and can function in society. But I'm not a people person, to put it mildly. Loners like myself are everywhere. Yeah. You have loners and then you have this guy who I think, from the way I'm hearing him, he would like to have friends or at least to be, to not be a loner, to really not go through this life alone and to really be with people, you know, to be able to talk to people at least without being awkward. And it's going to be really interesting when he enters the job market. Heck, somebody might just give him a job because he's handsome. That plays a part too. Let's not even get it twisted. People like to look at people that look nice so that there's something nice to look at. It's sad, but it's true um yeah but in terms of social anxiety yeah that might show through whatever interview he goes through or whatever whatever but it doesn't matter in that case because everybody is socially awkward and weird when it comes to interviews so not everybody everybody but you know what i mean so i think he'll be fine i think this guy will be just fine i think the fact that he knows what's going on he can name it 
pretty much knows the origins and is trying to deal with it. He's doing his own research. Like, he's on it. He's on it for real. So, <laughs> somebody said, wish all the people in the world with no friends could just do a meet and greet. That is hilarious. I just wonder what that would be like, you know? It's just like, I've had this before where, you know, one person could be quite dominant. And then they are in a group with other people that are quite dominant in their friend groups, different friend groups. And then they hang out together. And slowly but surely, all the dominant people get drowned out by the the uber, the, 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 the alpha uh, dominant person. There's always one that's just a little bit more dominant than everybody else, right? It's interesting. If you learn to be happy alone, people will want to be your friends. That's so true. That's really true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because then you exude confidence. People are like, why is this person just walking around smiling for no reason? They're walking into a room all by themselves and they're smiling. Why? Somebody says their social anxiety is too strong to see a therapist. Yeah, it's not easy, which is why if it becomes a thing, just like a class in school, I think it would be normalized so much more. And you no, know, it's like, oh, would well, you have a two o'clock therapy? Okay. Like, you know, just normalize it. If it's normalized from school and it's a thing that everybody has to do, like PE, like everything else that we do, like drawing class or whatever classes, and you just throw therapy in there. By the time you're older and real life starts to happen and affect you, hey, and you need to go to a therapist, it's no longer taboo, no matter what your culture, because it's been part of your curriculum at school. Yeah. I wonder if that could be made free in school. I mean, hmm. Therapist, hey, you need to pay for their time, but yeah, I don't know if that could be a thing. Somebody says nothing's worse when everyone notices it on you and you're the only one getting ignored in a group conversation. They just find you weird. I wish I never had social anxiety, man. That's not on you. That's on the people ignoring you in the group. Why the heck would you do that? That's weird to me. That's really awkward. Now, I think this is the last one I will read i had a lot of friends during my during the ages of 18 to 24 it was cool and everything but it was also the most dramatic years of my life days filled with hurt pain drama betrayal being used for used bro heartbroken and depression i had been into depression because of my because of friends a lot of toxic things can happen even if you have friends after graduation everyone picked up their own separate ways with their careers after coming to my senses, I quit social media, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, and I decided, I, and, I decided, and I dedicated my time reading books. For full two years, I was on my path of healing and finding myself again. I was isolated from so-called social world. I got so much closer to my mom, dad, and my sister. I realized how much time I missed spending with them because even when I was at home, I was on my phone in touch with my friends. Now, I hang out with my family everywhere. I spend all my time with them. I started to discover so many new things about them. I've learned so much from them and their knowledge and wisdom for who they are and for what they have to offer. For my sanity and my personal growth. My sister has become my best friend and my mom has become my greatest strength. And my dad has become my greatest pillar I can rely on. 24 to 26 were the greatest years of my life because I dedicated my time the most with my family currently at 26 my family has become my drive to live and i can't imagine a day without them i think that's so beautiful i think you really just need to find your people even if that's family members even if that's your immediate family or extended family just people to talk to it starts with little things you know people at the grocery store have a smile be nice even when they're cranky you know the, the mailman whoever you see on the street whatever just be nice to people I mean, obviously now with the mask and stuff, we wouldn't see if you're smiling, but you can smile. You can smile. I've been smizing and I've been seeing people smile. And you can tell from people's voice and their tonations and even their eyes when they're smiling at you. So that's very interesting. But yeah, you can still have per conversations with people that you don't necessarily ever have to see again. Like when you're out and about, right? And maybe that might help a little bit. But yeah, I hope he gets the right, mm, what to say. I hope he just finds the right people because these cocktail of medication things, mm, I, I, I'm not sure I really like that. Um, it's not very good. He's only 25, like, no. 
in any case if you're not already part of the family make sure you hit bump stomp as well as subscribe button comment because i really want to know what you think like because you obviously like this video and hit the notification bell while you it i'll see you in the next video which will be tomorrow daily videos up in here in the meantime make time for a glorious life it's time to start what living it right and god bless